Hello and welcome to the stream. My name is Yannick, I'm the French guy from Switzerland and this stream um, is a follow-up to the last stream which was this morning very very early um, where I showed how to create a Stinger transition for OBS Studio using Natron, Natron, whatever, whatever, however it's pronounced, I don't know. Um, but it was <coughs> a old old format, old school Stinger transition in that it would cover the whole screen at which point OBS would switch uh, from scene A to scene B and then this Stinger transition would end and reveal the new scene. But now with OBS uh, 27 we can now have Trackmate uh, Stinger Transition. So, what's a Trackmate Stinger Transition? Well, it's a transition in which you can see both scene A and scene B at the same time. How does that work? Well, you need to have a transition, a video transition. Everything that's visible on the video will be on the screen. And then there's a second part of the video, and I'm doing this with my hand because it's actually side by side on the video as we, we're going to see in a moment. And there's a mask on the second half of the screen where um, 
everything that is transparent reveals scene A and everything that is white will reveal scene B. So you can have like what we're going to do uh, today, like a, a, a bar at, in the middle of the screen, which divides the screen in two parts and then you can see half of the first scene and half of the second scene. Um, it's always complex to explain, but it's going to be a lot clearer when we're going to do that with Natron. Hello, Pro Gamer. How are you? Uh, let me bring the chat on the stream uh, for a moment. Um, welcome back. You were there earlier this morning, very, very early this morning. Well, you're fine. That's always good to know. Um, I'm glad you are here. I'm going to show the full screen now. I'm going to switch to Netron so that we can start working on this Stinger transition. Right, so we're back in Netron. Uh, I'm going to start with an empty project as we did uh, yesterday or this morning. Um, but this time we need a very large video. We need a video that is actually two screens wide. Two screens wide. So 1920 by two, that's uh, 3840. And uh, 1080 high. So I'm going to set that in my project settings over here. I won't, I don't know if I have the format. No, it didn't keep the format. So I'm going to click on new format here. And I'm going to set that to 3840 by 1080. Pixel aspect ratio is one and name. We're going to call that uh, track mate Matt. Is it mate or Matt? Matt, I think. Ah, ma well, uh, tr Stinger transition. I am fine. Thank you, programmer. I am fine. Okay, so, oh, thank you for the follow. Thank you very much. Um, so this is our very big screen. And what's gonna happen is that OBS is gonna use the left part for the video and the right part for the mask. Apart, apart from that, uh, it's a standard video. So, Let's uh, let's do what we did yesterday. So we're going to create a three color uh, rectangles going across the screen, but we need to change a, a little bit from what we did yesterday because of the large screen. But let's start by cl right clicking on this uh, workbench, click draw and then rectangle. Okay, so we have our first rectangle. It's too big and we don't want it to be uh, on the whole video only on this half here okay so we're going to change the size of this rectangle so we're going here um, it's already select uh, automatically selected the properties otherwise you can double click on there and it will bring the property window and we need that to be 1920 by 1080 okay and bottom left zero and uh, uh, zero zero here that's perfect that's what we want we want to go to frame one and not frame zero. That's okay. And we're going to do the same thing as we did yesterday. Right click on the rectangle, go to transform and add a transform node. Here, okay. Same thing as yesterday. We need to rotate that 45 degrees. If you wonder why I keep referring to yesterday, that's because I did that stream and it's now on uh, well it's it will be it will stay on twitch for a while but it's archived on youtube uh, so go and check it out on youtube if you want to okay we want that to be bigger in that direction so it covers the whole screen and a lot smaller in that that direction so we can actually see the scene Scene A, scene A will be there and scene B will be there. So we're going to go to the scale. And you can see here, scale is only one number. That means if I change things here, it changes uh, the scale in both directions. That is not what we want. So we're going to click on this little button here. And that gives us two 
direction x and y. So x is this direction, so we want to uh, have that a lot bigger, so let's say 2. That should be enough to cover the whole thing. And let's say we want that, I don't know, half of that. Yeah, seems okay. We're going to cover that maybe a little less. Let's go, uh, yes, 3. Okay. Um, now, we want this to move up as we did yesterday. So we're going to translate that like minus uh, 1500, 1500 up. Oh, that's a lot. That's too much. Minus 1000 and 1000. Seems that it's a uh, little bit too much. 800 seems to be not enough. So 900, 900. How about that? Yeah, I can I can live with that. Okay, 900, 900 on frame one. I'm going to right click in the translate uh, translate x x um, box, and I'm going to set key all dimensions. Right. Same as uh, last time, we go to frame 120, and that's where I realized that I didn't set my um, project property so I'm going to press S on my keyboard to bring the project settings here and I want that to be 60 frames per, per second and I want that to be 120 frames because I only want two seconds okay uh, I click on this button to go to the last frame and now I need to place this rectangle okay double click on the transform it was at 900 uh, minus 900 900 so i suspect that if i go here and change that to 900 minus 900 i should be okay but we have a problem we only want our video to be on half of the screen not uh, well um half of the, the the workspace of the i don't know how to call that but just on the left here not on the right here so we need to add a mask for that okay the easiest way I have found to add a mask that uh, is going to reveal only this part is to right click on the workspace, draw rectangle. This, uh, I'm going to double click on that if the properties are not there, but they were. I'm going to rename that uh, left side mask, enter. Okay. Uh, I need to add a merge node, so I'm going to right click on the, oh, I didn't explain. Uh, if you, to remove the connection, you need to click on the number here, right in the middle, and then drag and uh, release the mouse button. So that removes the, the connection. Now I'm going to select the transform, right click, go to merge, add a merge node, okay, and I'm going to take the mask connector here and plug it here <coughs> and what does that do that doesn't work wait oh oh because we need to go there maybe and invert the mask no so i made a mistake somewhere oh yes <laughs> i didn't reconnect the viewport the viewer so here's my viewer is the connector one i'm going to connect that to the output of the merge and now i have the mask but my mask is too big because i haven't changed anything my mask is all is still 3840 by 1080 i need to have a mask of 1920 by 1080 and there we go we now have an a video or a, a rectangle that only moves on half of our uh, video of, well, workspace or whatever you want to call that. I, I don't know how to call that, but you see what I mean. Okay, this is a boring white rectangle. Let's fix that. Go to rectangle. We click here on this uh, color picker and I have saved the colors from yesterday. That's the Ubuntu Mate Green. And now we have a nice green rectangle uh, and we are going to go to the 
dope sheet here and we're going to change those keyframe same as yesterday to horizontal interpolation and if we go to the curves editor we see a very nice smooth curve all right let's have a look looks great perfect so let's do what we did yesterday we're going to copy well we're going to go to frame one select both those nodes hit ctrl c ctrl v on the keyboard rename that rectangle 2 uh, i'm going a bit fast if you want to see how i did that check out my other stream that is transform 2 i need a merge node right click merge add merge node it's connected to a and i need hmm what do i need i need to remove this connection connect b here and then the output of that goes there and it's gonna be masked i'm going to double click on the transform go to the dope sheet and move those transitions 20 frames forward those keyframes 20 frames forwards and take those 20 frames backwards back take them back well whatever not graph go there change the color of the rectangle here that's this orange here click there and see what we have uh that's not what i want i want this yay nice okay again set rectangle 2 transform 2 ctrl c ctrl v they are now copied i need this to be rectangle 3 this to be transform 3 okay i need a merge node right click merge merge okay and i want this to be the b and i want this to be a and i want this rectangle to be uh dark orange i think that was the color it doesn't really matter and double click the transform go to the dope sheet here and move the transition 10 pixel 10 those keyframes 10 frames in and those 10 frames in but uh, on the other side and go back here and play that animation and it didn't work and it didn't work did i change the color of the rectangle i'm not sure um graph what color are you you are not the right color you should be that color yes yes let's try again yes very simple transition thank you programmer yes i have i have noticed now that the color didn't change right very simple transition but that was not really the point you can see um earlier the earlier stream for that so now what we have here is uh, uh, a transition that if we use that as is it's not going to be really useful because everything that's transparent let me toggle the transparency here so everything that's checkered here is actually to show where uh, but uh, the transparent part of the animation so everything that is transparent will show scene a so the scene you're coming from to show to reveal the scene we're going to we need to have some on this part of the screen we need to have, have uh, a white mate or mat mat i think it's mat let's say mat if it's not well i'm sorry <laughs> so we need a white mat um here what we want is that mat to start and and always keep in sync with the middle of the green rectangle because this is the one that came comes first and goes last so if we can have that mat stay in always under the green triangle then we should be okay so how do we do that well let's see we will need a rectangle so we right click 
on the workspace, go to draw rectangle. Okay. We're going to need to merge whatever we're going to draw on the left side of the screen with whatever is drawn on the right side of the screen. So everything that's here, uh, right side merge with the left side. So everything that is here up to this point is the left side of the screen. So let's double click on this merge node and call that left merge. Okay, so we know what we're talking about. So we're going to add a merge node here. Right click on the uh, rectangle, merge, merge. And we're going to remove this one and select that and select our viewer to this. Okay. This rectangle is too big and it's not um, 45 degrees. It's not turned 45 degrees. So let's fix that. So it's need to, it needs to be 1920 by 1080, but it needs to start its bottom left X X needs to be 1920. Right. Good. But not really. We want that to be uh, turned by 45 degrees, but we know how to do that. We right click on the rectangle, go to transform and add a transform node right here. And that's transform node. We're going to double click that and we can call that mat transform. Okay, and we're going to rotate that by 45 degrees. Nice. This rectangle can be called mat rectangle. Okay. Right. Uh, we're going to need to move this away. And we also we need to scale it up a little bit. So let's do that. Uh, double click on the transform. Click on the two dimensions scale here and scale that uh, two in the X direction. I uh, think we're gonna have the same problem as this, uh, as uh, uh, the, uh, the the animation, in that when we're going to move this matte rectangle away, it's going to bleed on the left side. So we're gonna have to add a mask. Okay. We know how to do that, don't we? We're going to add a merge here. Merge, merge, okay. And we're going to add another triangle. So right click on the workspace, draw a uh, rectangle, not triangle. Okay, this is 1920 by 1080 and starts at 1920. Okay, and this is going to be the mask of this thing. There we go. You can see it's been masked here. Okay. And that is going to... Well, we're going to... We, we, we won't bother renaming it. Okay. It is not exactly what we want. We would like this thing to be... What we want... For, we want this thing to cover the whole left screen. Oh, thanks for the link, but uh, I can't just check it out now, but I will check it out uh, later. So, programmer just uh, gave me a link to the Cambridge Dictionary on how to pronounce math. All right, uh, yes, so what I want is I want that um, when I'm at frame 120, which is there, I want this to cover the whole screen. So, let's go to the transform and let's scale that a little bit up on the y-axis. And actually, two seems to be a, yes, two seems to be okay. So I, can, I could actually do that. <laughs> I could scale two and scale both direction. Okay, now I want this to be there when the animation ends, but to I want this to be up there, somewhere, hidden, when the animation starts. So, um, we're on frame 120, we're going to go to the translate here, right click here, set key all dimensions, and we're going back to 
frame one and we need to move that up how much mm. well we're gonna have to try i guess i will say minus 1600 1600 yeah it's a bit too much i think minus 1500 1500 yeah just just not enough minus 15 50 15 50 Oh, that's 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 a lot that's a, that's okay that should be okay now let's have a look at our animation what we want to make sure is that the green rectangle that we're going to see here is appears before the mate and disappears after the mat so let's go frame by frame and see well, it is not working. Oh, I know why. I know why, because this transform has not been changed. It's still, uh, if we see the, if you get the curve editor, I don't know if you can see that. Where is it? Is it there? Yes. Um, maybe you can zoom out. Yes. See? It's not, uh, it hasn't been changed uh, to a smooth transition. Oh, I'm going to show something. I think we can do that from here. So if I get this and this keyframes, I think I can smooth that. Yes, I can hit H here and it smooth everything. Okay. Uh, I can't select the other one, so I'm going to use a you know click and select here and hit h and that should give us a very smooth transition we can always check here that all those keyframes are now horizontal uh well horizon they are using an horizontal interpolation that's what i mean okay so back to frame one and go frame by frame yeah, it should be okay, but I'd rather be sure. So what I'm going to do to be sure, I'm going to delay the appearance of the white rectangle by, let's say, 10, 10 frames. And so if we go back to frame one and start moving frame by frame, I'm going to zoom in here so we can have a better view. See, so the the green triangle comes first. That's good. Then th this um, mat is uh, coming into view. So, so scene B should be revealed at this point, but we have this animation in front of it. So it's not going to show just now. Move on, let's move, see, okay, the green is always in front of the beginning of the mat, so that's okay, yes, okay, and there we have a, a, a white mat here in this corner, and then we've got transparency on the video side, so this should reveal scene B, if everything works properly. Okay, once we're at frame 60, everything seems to be uh, about in the center here. Uh, this, I'm not sure this is... Ah, uh, why not? I need to bring those keyframes in also by 10 frames. And now we see that, okay, we're, we're going to go back a few frames. Yes, the green is still in front of the white, that's good. Here, we also, we are about at the, mi the, the middle of the screen. Here we see that there's plenty of colors on top of that, that's good. Here, I would say that the colors are still in front of the, uh, 
the, the mat. Here it's obvious, the mat is already there, but the green is still behind us, so that's okay. That's also okay. What we don't want is this white thing to be in front of this uh, dark, well, it's that salmon, orangey thingy. <laughs> I <coughs> Here we, we are okay. And at the end of the animation, the whole scene B should be visible and then OBS will s switch to um, scene B. Uh, am I using the snap version of Natron? Uh, that's a very good question. Am I using... Uh, yes, I am. Yes, Salmorange. Salmorange is a very good is a very good name for that color. I approve of this name, the Salmorange. Yes. And yes, to answer your question, I'm using the snap version of Natron. Natron. Whatever. Right, so we have our animation. Let's have a look at, at it. Yeah, it's very simple. It's going to reveal scene A, scene B. All right. Good. Go back to the node graph. We're going to add a image write node. We want to be sure that we are going to write an image sequence. And well, I, over, I have already saved that for my um, preparation. So we're going to call that track mate, um, mat, track mat, and there's two T's. Let's add two T's, track mat with two T's, uh, pound, pound, pound. So that's going to change the, um, that's going to uh, replace that with the uh, frame number on three digits and PNG. And we're going to save that. Okay. We don't need to go back to frame one, but I'd like to do that. Okay. And we're going to hit render in the um, right node. And it's going to write that. And let's see. Okay. Uh, I shall bring a file explorer just for fun. Okay, we're going to go there and then uh, Natron and then images. Well, yes. Yes, you are absolutely right. I need to connect <laughs> the render node. Otherwise, it's not going to render anything. I was wondering why it was going that fast. That's because it rendered 120 black frames. Well done. So I'm going to get the source and go to merge. Now I could say, hello Big Pod. I could say that I did that on purpose just to show you the difference between the render times. But no, I just forgot. Thank you for noticing it. And so I'm going to render that again. And it's probably going to take a, a little bit longer. Right. Well, it's uh, it's okay. It's a little bit longer than yesterday, or oh, this morning, actually. But it's um, yeah, it's going to take its time. Thirty something seconds. Let's see. Let's go back to the chat. Why it does that? Big Pod has joined the stream. Hello, Big Pod. How are you? Did you get some sleep? It is still rendering. Uh, it takes about a minute or so uh, to render this two second animation. And we already noticed um, on the previous stream that, yeah, it can, it can take a long time. If you're doing serious stuff like photorealistic renders with motion blur and, and lots of effects and stuff like that, you need a beefy machine, lots of RAM and lots of, uh, of uh, processing power. Right, that's nice, Big Bud. It's always good to have some sleep. <laughs> Even though sometimes it feels like it's a waste of time, but no, it's not. Mm. Okay, it has finished, so let's go back to the full screen view. Okay, it has finished. So as uh, same thing as yesterday, if we go to the uh, image uh, folder, we've got like a ton of stuff. I can remove 
Uh, <laughs> I could remove like zero. Yes, I can remove zero, uh, zero star dot PNG. Should have thought of that before, but hey. That's fish. Fish doesn't like that. Oh, images. Aram zero star dot PNG. Okay, that that worked. And then Rm one star dot PNG. Okay. And now we only have one hundred and twenty images, and so we can have a look here. And those look like those look like our animation. Although, oh, <laughs> I know. That's because there's the one T version, which was my preparation, and that is not correct. There are two Ts uh, in Matt. Okay, now that's a lot better. Okay, so that's our animation. Okay, we're going to merge that using FFmpeg. All right, FFmpeg. That R. That's the frame rate, 60 uh, frames per second. That's what. That's what we uh, targeted in Netron. We're going to use uh, those images as input. Dash I for input, and we're going to use these images using this uh, percent 3D uh, placeholder. We're telling FFmpeg that uh, the files will have a three digit number in there and then we're going to send that to track made with two t's mat track mat <laughs> with two t's and that's stinger and not stringer stop it stinger dot webm okay and that's gonna also take a few moments uh, you think that increasing the parallel cost for render will reduce the render time? You know what? We're going to see if that actually works. We're going to let FFmpeg finish so we don't uh, induce more processing. And so if we go to Edit Preferences and go to Threading, uh, number of parallel renders, is that, uh, that what you mean? Let's try four save and let's go to node graph and well not node graph sorry um a right node and let's render is it better or not oh yeah it seems to be a little bit better it also crashes it just crashed the uh, the render process so it might it might be something with my config. So try that. Uh, if your con if your renders uh, crash, try reducing the number of parallel renders. Maybe it's my config. I don't know. I don't know um, Natron enough to know if it's uh, a bug with Natron or a bug with my config. Could be either or or both. Okay, so we don't need to wait for that. We have our video that has been compiled. Let's go back here. So that's the wrong one. Oops, nope, that was not the wrong one. That's the project, but that's okay. Uh, that's the wrong one. And that's the good one, the track. Oh, I forgot the Ubuntu Mate logo in the Stinger, but that's okay. We don't need the logo. You can go back and watch this morning's stream to know how to add a logo right so we have our uh, transition let's go to our test instance of obs and we're going to use a an image <laughs> as a uh, scene one which is something we don't see too often Henrik and i are not finishing a hotshot racing race uh, and scene two is oh, uh, scene two is going to be a a early version of 
the cover art for my uh, Star Trek podcast. Right, let's edit this. Well, actually, let's remove this. Yes, let's go and add a Stinger transition. We're going to call it Stinger because I'm lazy. I'm going to browse and go to the uh, this one. Why is this one zero byte? Because that's not the right. That's the right. The right one. Track Matt Stinger. Okay, click open. Um, and we are going to use a track mat. Okay, audio transition point in milliseconds. Well, it's uh, two, two seconds. So audio transition point will be 1000 milliseconds, but we don't really need audio because we don't have audio. But if we had, we would use monitor and output and crossfade. Okay, so we're going to use a track mat. And here we can choose the mat layout. Either the same file side by side, Stinger on the left, Matt on the right, that's what we did. Or we can have the same, but we Stinger on top and Matt at the bottom. It used to exist, uh, an, uh, an option used to exist uh, that was using two separate files. But apparently OBS has trouble syncing those two videos. So they chose to use only one and do something like that. All right, so that's um, that's uh, scene A. Let's try and preview the transition. And there you go. This is scene B. If we preview the transition, you will see scene B until the the um, the uh, rectangles arrive, and it will reveal scene A on the top uh, left corner. There we go. Scene A is here. Let's click OK and have a look at real scenes and if you do that then you can see the transition going from A to B and revealing everything uh, well it does that so there we go we have a track mat stinger transition yeah All right, I, I, okay I know I said to go and watch the other um, video but I can't I just can't let that happen and doesn't it doesn't have the Ubuntu Mate logo. It's it's like my life is incomplete. <laughs> Alright um we're going to add a image read we're going to get this open this thing and this is going on top of everything else uh, I think it's going somewhere. Yes, before the left, the left merge and the left merge as the left side mask. Yes, so that goes here. Uh, I'm going to remove that and add a merge here. Merge, merge. Okay, and that's the B. And then the output of that goes to the A input of that. Okay, here we have our Ubuntu Mate logo. But if we move that, we want the logo to only appear when there's something under it. And that something is the result of the transform of the green rectangle. Again, go back to uh, my previous stream to know why and how to do this. And I think I have I added another trans another merge here, which is the easiest way that I have found to add a mask. And this mask is going to be that. Yes, that's it. Let's see. It's going to reveal the. Oh, what happened? What happened? Oh, that's because that's because in this version, the green, the green mask is too small. Uh, so it's not, it's not working properly in this version of my thing. 
I should... Oh, but actually, instead of using this, I can probably use the output of that as the mask for that. Can't I? I probably can do that. Let's see. Moving on, moving on. Yeah, yes, yes. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Let's go back. Let's double click on the right node and render that quickly. Or, well, not that quickly, but let's render that one last time and then we're going to see it in action and then we, we call that a day. Yeah, so those parallel uh, render core threads, whatever, that's the uh, the part that uh, makes my renderings crash. Well, I can live with that, you know. I can live with only having two threads to render my videos. I'm not a I'm not a video editor. I'm using Natron for for those simple stuff. All right, another 20 seconds and we should be okay. Now the the what I'm probably going to do at some point is add some motion blur to that uh, just for fun because we as we said this morning we're not even gonna notice any blur at this point it's a two second animation it's a stinger so yeah it doesn't really matter okay it is done we can now uh, reprocess the PNGs into a WebM video and we should be able to update maybe we don't even we don't even have to update the tr the stinger transition in OBS i don't know if it updates automatically or not we will discover that together let's try yeah it has updated itself yeehaw yeehaw Right. One more time for fun, and let's uh, quickly review what we've done. We're going to, I'm going to show the node graph, and I think if I hit the space bar, yes, I, I can have uh, that in full screen. So we have two groups here. We have the uh, the animation, which is on the uh, l which ends up on the left part of the video. So we've got our first rectangle, it's transformed, and we've got a second uh, rectangle and uh, a transformed, and we've got third rectangle with its transformed. That's what we did uh, on previous stream. Okay, that's the Ubuntu Mate logo. It uses it uses the result of this part, which is the whole three rectangle thing. As its mask and then it's merged into another node uh, actually I think I could and I don't think I need this one I think I could plug that in this one and uh, in, use that as the mask for this one and automatically go there but that's okay I mean it's just another merge node um, it simplifies if I want to add stuff then I, I have this last merge that is the mask for the video okay so that's the left part of the video yes uh, okay you, you can also see that you know it snaps in place here so if you want to have neatly placed graph you can do that to drag the the window i click on the uh, mouse wheel and then i drag my my uh, mouse and then i can use the uh, mouse wheel to zoom in and out okay so that's the um right part of the video and that's the mat that's the mat that is used by obs and we have a triangle uh, rectangle uh, that rectangle is also transformed and animated using a transform node and some keyframes and then we merge everything with a, uh, another mask 
which limits this movement, the movement of this rectangle to the left part of the screen. And we are merging both the left and the right part. And once we are done, we go to the viewer because it's easier to <laughs> see what we're doing. And then we go to the uh, right node here and we write a sequence of PNGs. And then uh, we use ffmpeg uh, with this command here ffmpeg r60 for the frame rate, dash i for the input, and then the name of the output. And then we go to OBS Studio and we define a stinger here. Uh, that's the file we just generated. We say that we use a track mat and same file side by side. And that's it. And you can you can click preview and once again see our amazingly overproduced track mat transition for OBS Studio. Alright. Let's go back to the chat view. That's it. Yes, it does auto update. And thanks for the congratulations. <laughs> uh, that's uh, that's an, a small trick that's not really using Natron for what it is. Uh, I don't think it's supposed to be used for that, but it can be used for that. I'm sure you, that can be done with other tools. Uh, it's not really complex. So I guess, as we said uh, in the other stream, I guess um, DaVinci Resolve can do that. I, s I haven't seen a lot of DaVinci Resolve, but I've seen that it has a node editor too. So it's probably close to uh, what we can do with Natron. Uh, I don't know if um, Shortcut or Kden Live can do that. Maybe. Uh, I didn't I didn't even try so I, I don't know um, and as you you have seen maybe the transition here uh, that I have on this uh, layout uh, if I go to the chat window for example you see the mouse clicking the menu and then you hear the sound of that I I did that with Natron too and, and glimpse or gimp and um, I think I use this open shot uh, for that or in live, I don't know, uh, one of those to produce these videos. So maybe one day I will do a stream and show how I did that. Thank you, uh, programmer. Yes, it it was more of a tuto than a, a, you know an, an explanation of in in detail uh, of on, on how to use Natron. Uh, as I said, go online. There are lots of tutorials on how to use Natron. Um, OBS uh, Studio Transitions, um, Track Mat Transitions are not that complex, but it took me a while to understand how to do things correctly. And again, the reason why we're, we're using PNGs, uh, PNG sequence instead of exporting directly uh, to WebM from Netron is that it doesn't work very well. I don't know if I'm doing things wrong, it is entirely possible, but I thought that the, I don't know, making PNGs and then uh, transforming that into a webm with uh, FFmpeg is the uh, easiest way for me. Uh, might not be the fastest way, but it's the easiest way for me. It's the, uh, the, the way I have found and it works every single time. So that's what I'm doing. If, dear viewers, if you know how to do that, in any other way that is uh, faster and maybe simpler, please give um, leave a comment uh, either. Well, you can't really leave a comment on Twitch, can you? Uh, so leave a comment on YouTube. This video was, well, this stream was first live on Twitch and it's going to be archived on YouTube. So um, do everything you do when you watch a video on YouTube, subscribe, hit the bell and do whatever you want to do on Twitch. You can follow or, yeah, I think it's follow. Um, and you will be notified next time I do a stream. Well, that's it for today. Thank you, uh, Big Pod. Thank you, Programmer, for joining me in the chat. Uh, I still don't have a stream is ending uh, layout. So 
I'm going to end the stream right now and I will catch you next time. Ciao, ciao.